Patches vlog and today I'm on Wahiki Island. Welcome to the 27th episode of my vlog about crafts and life in New Zealand. Here is my daughter. She's my co-host today and we are in Wahiki Island at Catherine Mitchell's uh, craft center, art center, and we're gonna dye some yarn. Come and join us. Hello and welcome again to my vlog. My name is Narina. I am a Russian living in New Zealand and this videos are about this vlog is about my life here in New Zealand. I try to give you some snippets of curious things. I talk about yarn related crafts, about wool, about knitting, crochet and spinning and dyeing and making dolls. Also about being a mom here. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more of this, then hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate that. And today I'm going to tell you about dyeing. I mean dyeing wool, of course. And like I told you in the previous episode, I went to Waiheke Island, which is about 40 minute uh, ride on a ferry, and I dyed some wool. So before that, uh, usually I start with my finished objects and today my finished object is half finished object actually, the stripy sock, yay! So I really persevered and I stayed up late when the, my baby was sleeping and I did finish one sock. So here and here is a different hand dyed yarn and all of this is hand dyed uh, stripy sock yarn as well. I'm really loving it. The next thing I want to do is dye a um, self-striping yarn object. So I will jump right into the next whip that I have. This is the first sock and this is already, <laughs> I, I know I didn't do much, I just did this. But with a baby on my hands, that's already a lot, I think. So here we are. That's how I do the heel flap. And very soon I'm determined to finish these as well. This is also from my hand dyed yarn. So I have a shawl that I told you about last time. Oops. And this is the Find Your Fade. And I did very little, but um, I'm still very proud of it. Here it is. I did this much. <laughs> it's only been a week uh, since the recording of the last episode. I just wanted to, because I know I will have a lot to talk about, I wanted to record it right away. Because today I'm going to a very nice opening party. There will be a new shop open in Parnell, um, in the cafe called Stitch and Bitch. And I'm very excited to see all the knitting people and the Truly Myrtle podcast. Libby will be there. Um, my friend Sarah will be there and my other friends that I met at the knitting retreat. And yeah, that's exciting. So that's why I'm filming this episode today. I know that I haven't really finished these or these socks, but I decided that I had to cast on a new project. So remember the yarn I showed you last time? That amazing uh, who, Harney Hooley's designs, silk and merino. So I wound up this ball. It took me forever. It's 700 meters and I don't have the wool winder. But anyways, I started. The, the shawl is called Winter on My Mind. And uh, here it is. I just placed this nice cat as a, basically to show me that this was the right side and this is the wrong side but now that I know in the beginning it was hard to remember which side the increases go but now I remember but still I like all kinds of things like that 
I bought them in Kuala Lumpur when we had to do visa runs when we were living in Bali. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I lived before this, I lived in Bali for eight months and I was knitting there as well. I was crocheting mostly and I was doing some visa runs to Kuala Lumpur. And before, before that, I was living in Turkey, in Istanbul, and this is where my first episodes were filmed. So you are more than half a welcome to pop into the first two episodes, which were filmed in Istanbul, where, yeah, it's about two years ago. Very soon we're going to have the podiversary, second podiversary. This show is designed by Melanie Berg. Yeah, and uh, the, it's very simple. It's just two colors. It starts with the dark color and then it stripes into the lighter color and at the end is this beautiful beautiful lacy pattern with this like um, not snowflake but they still look very intricate like you know uh, frost on the window pane and I think that's where she got the inspiration for the name the winter in my mind and I'm very excited to make this show it's very very thin it's probably the thinnest yarn I've ever knitted with it's a two ply but uh, it's just such nice feel, of course, because it's silk. Never knitted with silk before either. Anywho, before I forget, I also want to tell you that very soon in Auckland, there will be a wool festival. And it is organized by creativefiber.org.nz. It will be on the 25th of May on Saturday in Kumeo showgrounds and i will definitely be there so if you can come come there say hi to me i sometimes have people like stop me somewhere and say oh i know you i know your podcast i'm very very <laughs> shy and uh but i'm pleased to hear that people are actually watching because if you don't leave a comment how would i know that you watched it right so yeah come here and um say hi uh, there will be amazing fiber yarn, needles, fleece, hooks, fineness, embellishments, anything, anything you want and more. And I'm sure you will find something that it will be just amazing for you. Like I did last year. Lots of fiber for spinning, lots of amazing spindles, hooks, um, designs and much, much more. So now to the most exciting part. I filmed quite a few short video clips that I will show you about my yarn experiment with Cher and let's start with this. So what I was thinking we could do is um, to use my 600 gram of twist on twist yarn right and we're going to pre-soak it in vinegar water and then I I will see <laughs> I have something in mind, but we will see what comes up. This is my awesome friend. This is my awesome friend, Cher. She's so kind that she's helping me today. Don't forget to check out her blog on Why He Be Forage. So I'm putting in about one cup, half a cup, half a cup, four big buckets of mm -hmm. it, uh, 600 grams. 600 gram yeah. of wool. I'm going to soak this for a while. Mm -hmm. Just soak that and then we can play with the, the dyes. We've yes. made it up into a liquid and we'll just work out what colours we want from mm -hmm. the experiments we did on uh, Friday. Mm -hmm. so we can look at the colour charts. Yes. Cool. So, yes. So, this is Mika's sample card that we've done. So we used um, 10 grams of Del A powder to one liter of water mm -hmm. and we were dyeing two grams of wool. Mm -hmm. So that is our, that's the percentage method. Mm -hmm. so what we did was we uh, took those 600 gram skeins and we dyed them in the blue dye first and then I took them out when they absorbed all the dye and one by one, skein by skein, the 200 gram skeins, I um, soaked them in low immersion um, method in the frying pan 
and we brought them to a simmer. It's going to be a sweater that is going to scream handmade anyway. So. Yeah. Mm. Well, and you've got three balls of it, so you can mm. alternate them. Yes, in, yes. Instead of, yeah, what, it was knit with two yarns at yeah. a time. Yeah. yeah. And then just spray it quickly. Even though it's not that, you know, it's not that hot. It's striking really fast, which yeah. is unusual for blue. Is it? Yeah, because yeah, usually blue takes, you know, a lot to exhaust. Well, this, not so much this blue, the other blue that I use, the cyan, reacts with water, apparently. With water molecules. Yeah. And then I was using the sieve and sieve. Yeah, see, and I was just packing, you know, the yarn with two colors. I decided that two is enough because the base is already really nice and bright. So I used the green and the pink. I will show you this color. Day, dye day has finished and uh, I am here waiting for the ferry now. It has been wonderful. I'm so so grateful to share for minding the baby when she woke up during the process of dying. And I am going back home with amazing handmade, I mean amazing because it's amazing to me. Hand dyed yarn and lots of uh, good memories and positive energy and this Baba has enjoyed a lot as well <laughs> it has been wonderful I we were so lucky that there was no rain when we were there it's only started to rain now that's pretty lucky and also I'm just the luckiest person that I met this amazing people and I get the chance to do what I love and learn new things and when I get home, I'm gonna show you what I've done with the yarn and what I plan to make with it. So, see you there. So here we are. <laughs> they are just, I love the colors that I got. I love them so, so much. As you can probably tell, <laughs> I love these colors. So. Let's start from the beginning. I decided to leave one of the skeins without speckles because I thought, what if I make a sweater where I want to make like a lace detail or something, then I would probably need one color so that this detail is seen better. I've actually been looking at some very nice designs online and I've seen the sweater. Maybe I'll make it, maybe not, I don't know. And it has this really nice lace detail going along the sleeve and um, maybe that would be too much the speckles and the cables and ornaments but i really like that design so we shall see as you can see because this cane is quite big i think and the pen wasn't that big there is some variegation like you can see the 
the parts of the yarn where it was either when the, where the dye didn't get all the way through especially here where they were tied I don't know if it's possible to see there but but yeah there are it's pretty actually it's quite it's quite okay I mean it's probably will be seen better when it's dye and it knitted up oh no I have some specs here <laughs> but anyway this is my base let's say for the the yarn that I decided to call mermaid and I decided to call it that because turquoise to me is like those waters where the mermaids live and I have made one doll, a mermaid, with dark skin and this color, bikini top and tail. And I just loved the combination. So this was the second, uh, the first speckly one that I dyed. I just want you to see how those specks look close up in the close up. Just to... Remind you, this is a DK weight yarn, Merino. And, uh, yeah. So I know that uh, if you don't have much water, the dye is just gonna be like little specks, but the more water you have, the more it's gonna disperse and be more like this. Like take up more of the thread. So here, because it was my, well, not first, but second time doing speckled yarn. I think I just didn't realize that if I do little specks, they would be spreading so much. So basically, I wasn't aiming for this being so purple and pink, but that's what happened. Like, I really wanted it to be like this. You see this tiny specks in here? But in the end, what happened was that some dye got in the water and it just dyed what was underneath. So, as you can see, and of course, I tried to turn it, but I probably didn't do a very good job. So here, there isn't much specks, but there's lots of green ones. So when I took this out of the pot, oh, well, of course, we let it stay there. As you can see, you see how red it is. I really didn't want it to be this purple. I wanted it to be just a tiny bit. Basically, this is what I wanted. Like if all of it was like this, this would be what I was aiming for. But for that, I guess it would be surprising if I achieved that from the first try, right? I'll have to do some more dye. And one more time, Cher, thank you so much. Without you, I don't think I could have done it. <laughs> so yeah, this is the first and this is the second skein. So because I understood that the more pink you put, the more wide it spreads, I decided to do very little of it and I put more green. So this skein is a bit different, like you can tell even like this. There's a difference, this is much redder than this. And let me open it for you. It's closer to what I wanted from the beginning. Oh. I just want hair like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, in short, my uh, conclusion is that there shouldn't be much water when you speckle dye and you should be really careful with how much you flick. I mean, not flick, but like um, drop the, the dye. And uh, I, if I was doing it again, I would spread, I mean, I would uh, separate this into two skeins of 100 gram each. And probably that will be, that will give me more coverage. 
so that I wouldn't have this uh, kind of empty segment. But in the end, I'm very happy with the colors. I love these colors. And um, very soon after this podcast, I'm going to wind it up and I want to make a swatch. And probably I will even include it here. We shall see. So while I was doing there, um, this dyeing, there were other amazing ladies who came up and they gave their advice on how it should be done, what the temperature should be, how much vinegar to put, or to put liquid, the dishwashing liquid, so that the colors don't strike that fast. One of them gave me some wool and we put it so that it absorbed the rest of the dye. And I'm really loving these color. So basically all I need to do now is card it and spin it. And I just think it's basically this lighter part, this was the color I was aiming for. And apparently I should have used less dye than this, but I had no idea. I had to trust my friends who were helping me. So for the next time, I would use maybe half of the amount of this dye. So yeah, look at that. This is awesome. It just has this really nice curly parts. Oh, I'm so excited. Exciting. I am planning to go to a knitting retreat this year again. Last year I was there with my bump. <laughs> this year it will be my daughter. And I... I'm very excited to see others, what they're spinning and uh, what they're knitting. And last year we did made this um, squares for this charity blanket and we learned some carding techniques and new crochet style knitting, I mean crocheting, and it was lots of fun. So yeah, that's all the news related to yarn and wool. And in the last segment, I just wanted to share a few things about my life. So if you were here just for the crafty part, thank you very much. And if you're here, if you want to stay longer, I'm happy to be here with you. I just wanted to show you, um, for those of you who are not in New Zealand, some of the things that I purchased as I'm still a very new Kiwi. I'm actually a mom of a Kiwi. Kiwi, I mean my daughter. She was born here. So having the um, this very beautiful passport, I want to show you. She has this very beautiful passport with um, every page is so different. It's just beautiful. So she's a Kiwi, I'm not, but I want her to inherit both all, all of the cultures that I know of. And when we went shopping, I got her this lovely cute bib. And these birds, I actually saw them in the wild. They just, in the parks here, it's very common to see them. And isn't it awesome? <laughs> So today I gave her a cucumber for the first time and she was wearing it and it just looked so cute. <laughs> Another thing I got her was the um, Hasha Kiwi Lullaby. And um, as you can see, this is a very famous brand for um, children's books. When I was teaching English, which I was in uh, Turkey, I used to love books uh, made in this uh, publish house. Just quickly to, I want to quickly show you what New Zealand is, as how New Zealand is represented in this book. So really, there are many, many sheep in this country. And this book is wonderful. If you can find it, it's just amazing. Um, for example, this flowers, very, very typical here. And you can see them on the beach, outside the house. This is the pigeon, the water pigeon, I think, or the wood pigeon. And the tui bird, 
and the kawaii flowers. Uh, it's such a beautiful book that I'm like, it makes me appreciate the place I live even more because I see that, I mean, through this book, through this beautiful color work, I appreciate the, the many colors that are here. This is the Tui Bird, which sings so beautifully. This is the Pawa Shell, and um, it's seen, you can find it in many touristic shops. And these are the cowrie trees, which are protected now. Um, and this um, is the symbol that I kept, I kept repeating it, I think, in the previous episodes. The silver fern, which I have here. And uh, we got it when we went with my daughter today for a little walk in the park nearby here. And the great part about this book is that there is also a Maori version of the same song. And there is a CD, which I haven't opened yet, but that's a very exciting new book that I got for my daughter. Also, I got lots of books from Cher and from other lovely friends, and I'm planning to read them to her. She loves books. Another thing, mom related, if you're still here, <laughs> I wanted to talk about some eco-friendly uh, methods to use when you have a baby. So, as we all know that the babies use lots of disposable um, nappies. So I decided to go for reusable ones. And I found this really cute ones in one of the local stores here. And they just came today in the mail. So basically they're the same as a normal nappy, only uh, this is a waterproof layer. And there's a pocket inside where you put this insert and then your baba can be eco-friendly, which I want her to be. I want her to take care of the environment that she lives in. And also very stylish and beautiful. This cute little deer on the button. And the second one I got is this cute farm animals. So I wanted to ask, uh, do any of you also use any... Um, disposable, I mean, sorry, reusable nappies. Is it popular around where you are? I mean, I don't know how many moms are watching this actually, but this is something that I'm really into right now. And I'm trying to be create as less garbage as possible. I try to recycle as much as I can. And the cool thing about it, that it came in a made from plants compostable bag. So this is how New Zealand is trying to take care of the planet and I'm really loving it. There are no plastic bags in the shops. You have to bring your own um, carry bag or like a mm, net bag and there's recycled beans and I don't know. I haven't seen this when I was living in Russia or Turkey and I felt really bad about it so I just hope that the rest of the world is taking I mean it's it's not easy when it's only the people who want it it has to come from the top for at some point and I'm really um, grateful that the country I live in is very mindful of this kind of stuff so thank you very much for watching me today I'm very grateful to you that you stick around with me for this long if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you want to see more just subscribe and hit the bell button and i will see you very soon and i will tell you all about that party that i'm going to today and in the future about the wool fest that we have here in auckland this was marina find me on instagram is marina toys or marina hoja bye